Right, and we end, we end, we end today with uh, another global brand that is indeed connecting with local audiences. This is a story of Visa, and of course how this company, a company that is a payments company, a transaction company, is embracing social commerce and indeed uh, trying to connect with audiences by piggybacking and endorsing and sponsoring some of the world's biggest emotional events. And to tell us all about it, here's Adrian Farina, the Head of Marketing in Latin America and the Caribbean at Visa. Adrian, welcome. Hello, everyone. I just realized that I'm standing here between hot bodies dancing and happy hour. <laughs> Beautiful people and beer. So I feel young again. So bear with me. And um, what I'm here to tell you today is a little bit about how the world of commerce has been transforming in, in recent years, how this transformation is inspiring the way we at Visa do marketing, and importantly show uh, an example of how we are bringing this to life through the activation of the sponsorship, the events that we sponsor globally. At Visa, we are about a promise. We start with a promise which is to provide people around the world with the best way to pay and be paid for everyone and everywhere. That's a promise upon which Visa is founded. And that promise lives in the world of commerce, a world that, as I said, has been evolving dramatically in recent years. Just a few years ago, by the turn of the century, commerce was primarily conducted in two different realms. I mean, we had the physical realm, which was what traditionally has been all about in, in retail and in commerce, and the emerging digital space. But they were quite separate realms. If you think of how we conducted transactions back in 2000, if you were to buy a TV set, you could start at home doing some research, uh, look for some expert advice or maybe an article in a magazine. You would print that at home, you would take that paper to the store, talk to an associate, watch the different TVs, compare, and then conclude the transaction there. So the interaction between these two worlds was basically none. Media consumption was at 60 plus hours per week. But importantly, only a tiny fraction of that was done through digital, in a digital form through digital devices and also mobile penetration, even if it sounds crazy. Only 10, 13 years ago, it was at one handset, one mobile device per person. If you fast forward that to today, what you are seeing is more media is consumed. We are about 84 hours on average of media consumed in Latin America. Of course, most of that is in dual uh, screening. Uh, more than half of that is being consumed in a digital form. And mobile penetration has surpassed the number of one device per person. But what's interesting is that to the dim dimensions of the physical commerce and digital, there's this third dimension of social that's changing completely how commerce is conducted today. And also, the interaction between those three worlds is more and more prominent. If we fast forward this a few years, by the end of the decade, media consumption will continue to grow. That media will be consumed in digital devices more and more. About two thirds is what we are projecting is going to be. And more and more mobile handsets, not just phones, but tablets, are going to be in the hands of people across Latin America. Forecasts are about 1.4 devices per person. All this is given uh, at the birth of this new space, what we call digital commerce, which is only at 45, 46 billion dollars today, but that's going to grow exponentially as this, again, convergence of different worlds takes place. So when the physical world, the digital world, and the social world comes together, converge, they give birth at what we call omni-commerce. Omni-commerce is this complete convergence of three different dimensions into one. So, but rather than me talking about it, let me show you an example of how three transactions might take place in the not so distant future in this world of omnicommerce. Which sound will be wonderful.
So this is omnicommerce. All these technologies that you just saw here are already available. And there's a lot of experimentation going on. But what's, what's interesting about this model, this, this new reality, is that it's about integration. And it's about three principles. The first principle is that it's powered by the people. It's about people informing other people. It's about people influencing other people. Earlier today, we saw I mean, these this brilliant startups built on those same principles, I mean, people recommending other people. Um, the second principle is the use of intelligent communication. So all these vast amounts of data that we are generating through our mobile devices, through our digital behavior, uh, being, I mean, enabling us, marketeers, to provide hyper-relevant data and information to help consumers do their transactions better. And the third principle is that of seamless interactions. Remember when I was explaining before the, the, the differences between the physical and, and, and digital world, I mean, consumers are expecting less and less friction between those three worlds. A little bit about each of these three principles. People powered, I mean, you've seen all, all these stats in different ways and forms, but so the, 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 the explosion of social media in Latin America is no mystery, about 350 million accounts in social media. But what's interesting is what people are doing that's relevant to us in commerce, in retail, in marketing. I mean, people are using these connections peer-to-peer -to, -peer to help them make decisions. People are trusting other people more than the salesperson, more than the expert. Uh, it's okay, yeah, it's, it's, it's logical that people trust friends, but many times we trust in order to choose a restaurant what somebody which we never heard about, a total stranger puts a thumbs up, thumbs down, and then that guides our choice. So people are informing decisions of other people more than never before. So people, people uh, power is principle number one. Uh, the second principle is about intelligent communications and how we use data. I mean, yes, people are online, people are with our devices, uh, tablets, uh, uh, smartphones, etc. but what, what they are doing with that data, with, that, with those devices, search. They're searching virtually anything. Everything is, is uh, the trigger for a search. 72 million searches conducted daily in Latin America. Uh, people expect brands to give them offers, coupons, uh, uh, incentives, discounts, through their mobile devices so that they are relevant whenever and wherever they are. Hyper-relevant offers, hyper-relevant information. And almost 20% of consumers are doing what's called showrooming, which is this, if you are a retailer, a very annoying habit of you walking into a store, trying 10 different pairs of running shoes, talking to a sales associate who's an expert, choosing the right one for you, and then taking your phone and buying that online through Amazon. So not even leaving the store and maybe even using their free Wi-Fi. That's showrooming, that's what people are doing today. But why? Because they're expecting this seamless experience and they can only find it looking for that. I mean, they need to go from one place to the other. Very little stores or retailers are tapping into this exp ex um, expectation of seamless experiences, which is the third principle. Um, consumers are more and more interested in using mobile commerce, the ability to buy one click or not one click, but buying from your smartphone, buying when and wherever you are. Uh, people are expecting um, to, I mean, we're we are expecting to see more and more growth of mobile payments. And very important, again, if you're a retailer, is that consumers are going to choose you more if you are able to manage their transaction in a seamless way throughout the different worlds. If you go to a store and buy something, you want to be able to get a refund directly to your, to, to your, to your credit card. If you buy something uh, online, you want to be able to go to the store and return it without any issue. And that's the type of transaction that consumers expect more and more. So these are the three principles behind commerce. People powered, intelligent use of information, and seamless experiences. So we at Visa are applying these principles to the way we do marketing today, to the way we activate especially our sponsorships. At Visa, we are lucky enough to be associated with some of the best events globally, the uh, Olympic Games, the FIFA World Cup and all the FIFA events, NFL here in North America, Copa Libertadores in Latin America. So they're the coolest and most attract, appealing events in the world of sports. So we're applying these three principles to the way we conduct our marketing activities to activate these sponsorships. And I'm going to share with you the most recent case in that world, which was the activation we did for the Confederations Cup that took place 
three months ago in Brazil. I forgot who won, uh, but, but it was, I can't remember. Uh, Brazil probably, yeah. Um, and um, the, the, the way we build this case is following those principles. So we started by listening to people and getting an insight that would inspire the entire campaign. And the insight was that, same as athletes, that needs to pre the athletes need to prepare and train to perform well at the, at the pitch, at the field, at the game. Also fans prepare to cheer, prepare to be a fan. There's a lot of rituals and preparations. Uh, uh, people start earlier before the game planning where I'm going to watch it, how, with whom, what I'm going to drink, where I'm gonna, how I'm going to dress. So there's a, lot of rituals, there's a lot of preparation going on. So we, we, we inspire the campaign on listening to people. We use intelligent communications because for the first time ever at the world of Visa, we started experimenting with real-time communications. We put together newsrooms, combining people from the brand, from the agency, legal, uh, photographers on the venues, being able to take pictures of what was going on in the event, and being able to produce content and broadcast that in real time only two, three, five minutes after the event happened. And finally, this was a campaign that lived throughout a variety of platforms in a seamless way. So the campaign lived in both traditional media, digital, social media, in a seamless way. So let me show you a video of how this turned out. Visa, the proud worldwide partner of FIFA, activated the 2013 FIFA Confederations Cup with a unique campaign to connect with Brazilian consumers. The idea was that better prepared fans will have a better performance just like the players. The integration of television, digital, social, mobile, out of the home and point of sale provided the best inspiration, information and tips on how to better prepare. First, a television commercial was launched and introduced the hashtag Tô Preparado. In parallel, a digital campaign was developed, focused solely on social media engagement, where Brazilians are highly connected. As part of the strategy, Visa partnered with Porta dos Fundos, a group of comedians whose channel on YouTube is incredibly popular in Brazil. And there's more! We tapped into the second screen experience to provide real-time content before and during the matches. Three newsrooms were implemented to leverage the actual conversation happening in Brazil, so consumers themselves could help fuel the most engaging content. And Visa was also at the places Brazilian love together, spreading the Tô Preparado hashtag. After the event, Visa was the second most recalled sponsor during the 2013 FIFA Confederations Cup. On Facebook, Twitter and other social networks, we reached 133 million users during the campaign. In three months, the Visa fan page had an increase of 1.2 million fans. Of those, 700,000 were collected during the three newsrooms. Plus, 2 million brand conversation took place on Facebook and Twitter. We added 144,000 new followers on Twitter, earned 78 million impressions for the hashtag Tô Preparado, and organically reached Brazil's Twitter trending topics three times. The partnership with Porta dos Fundos also contributed to the success of the campaign. The videos had over 19 million views on YouTube. Visa was present at every moment in every place, providing fans with the seamless experience that helped them enjoy the Confederations Cup to its fullest. We are now prepared to achieve the same kind of success in the World Cup. Are you ready? So this was an extremely successful example for us where we did a lot of different things, experimented a lot, which is something we're trying to do more and more at Visa. The numbers that we achieved here, I mean, 1.2 million new fans in Facebook just for Brazil, almost 20 million views on our content on YouTube. Again, n n numbers never achieved before for, for Visa. But why all these numbers and all this engagement is, is important for us? There was just one statistic there, uh, lost within the video, but is. Visa has been a partner of FIFA only for a few years. We only sponsored one World Cup, I mean, 2010 in South Africa. So for us to establish that connection between the brand and FIFA is extremely important. We, we ran a test, um, uh, a research before the Confederations Cup of which brands consumers associated with, with uh, FIFA, and Visa didn't even rank there. By the end of Confederations Cup, Visa was the number two brand in association with the event, which was an extremely good success for us. 
So that was Confederations Cup. Again, these numbers are uh, extremely successful for us, but we are now getting ready full steam into what's going to be the big event next year. We are already working on what's going to be the largest event on our history as a brand, and probably the, the largest event that we've seen in Latin America. Why this is so important? Why FIFA is so important for the brand? Well, that football is big in Latin America is no surprise. 44% uh, of people in Latin America declare themselves as football fans, regular football fans, Boca, other clubs. So people follow regularly some clubs. But sports in general, 58% of people declare themselves as fans of one sport, including football. But when, you, when the World Cup comes every four years, almost 70% of people in Latin America become active fans of the World Cup. That's my mother, for instance. My mom, every four years, becomes a complete fanatic of football. She all of a sudden wants to follow the games, watch the games, and every four years she asks the same questions. Why only the goalie touches the ball with the hands? And all, all that kind of, of, of questions. But she's one of these people that become, all of a sudden, a crazy fanatic of football just because of the World Cup. That's, that's the power of, of this event, and that's why it's so important for a massive brand, a universal brand like Visa. Because in Latin America, football goes beyond reason. Football is a passion. It's close to people's hearts. And for us at Visa, it's very important to create an emotional connection with consumers. Football is even more important than life and death. For some people, there's all it is. And next year, we're going to have our World Cup. For the first time in almost 30 years, the World Cup is going to happen in our region. We won't need to wake up at 2 a.m. in the morning to watch a game. We won't, need to, we won't be watching a game that's played where in, in a place where we don't even understand why the crowd is dressing a certain way or they're playing those annoying bubuzelas, strange habits. This World Cup is going to happen in our region. It's our World Cup. Whether you're Brazilian or not, everybody in Latin America feels that this is our World Cup. So the, the, the appeal and the connection is tremendous, and it's a unique opportunity for all of us working in this sponsorship. We're going to have the eyes of the world and the hopes of many nations looking at, into this event. So just as consumers have incorporated digital and social and expect these richer, frictionless experiences, we believe that marketers we need also to evolve, adapt, build the capabilities that we need. I've talked a lot about experimentation. We are doing that every day, every week with our partner agencies in all of our countries, trying to adapt and, and, and get better at this. We ha don't have all the answers. We need to forget all habits, all ways of doing things, and again, embrace the new. This World Cup 2014 will be a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for us. That's how we feel it at Visa. So join us in helping make this event a memorable journey. Thank you very much. Thank you, Adriano. We do have time for one or two questions. Adriano, you and I were talking before, and I asked you the question that uh, came up uh, earlier with, uh, with Adriana Cisneros and other members of the panels about the growth of digital advertising and how much global brands like you are placing on these new platforms. And you gave me a phenomenal figure as to how much of your budget is now going to digital. So share that with us. Tell us the amount and why. Well, the, the amount... I will be dead in two seconds if I say the amount. Right. Uh, but what I can tell you is that it's growing. This year it's growing 50% versus a year ago. And it's going to grow another 50% the following year. So our, it, it's, it's growing. I, actually, it's, we're so doing it's more things that we can handle. It's from what percentage at the moment? Huh? I mean, not, not, not amount, but what percentage at the moment it is? Is it, is it, is it, are we going well, from... It depends on the country, but some countries we are at 20%. Some countries we are even at 30%. I mean, the smaller the, the market, the less money, I mean, the, the less money you have to afford traditional media, so the more we're using social. And I can think of one or two markets in which most of our investment is between social and maybe cable television. Right. And within that, give us an idea, because a lot of these uh, social commerce platforms are obviously going to be based on mobile mm -hmm. transactions mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. NFC communication mm -hmm. and the instant transactions and so on. Uh, there's no secret you're investing heavily in the technology uh, and, and putting money in Silicon Valley in a lot of these uh, startups as well. So 
How much of that 50% will go to mobile campaigns? Um, that's an interesting question because the, the, the way we see this is not the platform, is the vehicle. So for instance, we, are investing, we have global partnerships with Google, Facebook, and Twitter, and we invest heavily in campaigns wow. that run there as, as I mean, together with traditional media. Whether people access those campaigns in mobile devices or at the PC at work, like some of us do, uh, mm -hmm. Uh, we, 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 don't re we don't really follow that. What we try to do is create this seamless experience so that no matter how you want to experience that, we are there. And let, let me close by asking you about security because in developing nations and in many countries in Latin America, there's still mistrust of using plastic and, uh, and so on. So uh, is, is, is the campaign that you're going to launch for the, uh, for, for the World Cup and of course for the Olympics, is it going to be based on that insight, trying to reassure people that this is safe and it's, it's okay to use plastic? That's, that's an interesting question because uh, electronic payments in Latin America are still only a fraction of what they are in North America or in Europe. I mean, there's a lot of people that still, majority of people still prefer to pay in cash. But interestingly, it's not because of they don't trust the credit card. It's just an ingrained habit. There's a lot of different reasons and insights why people prefer to pay cash that don't have to do with security. I mean, we, we invest heavily in providing secure transactions. So when we ask consumers whether that's the driver, it's not necessarily that the reason why. It's maybe sometimes they don't feel it fits. Sometimes there's all sorts of things like in pride. People feel prouder when they show off the, the bills, the money. Uh, than b b instead of paying with credit. So there's a lot of, it's a, it's a very rich and complex uh, set of reasons, but thanks for us. I mean, people do trust what we do and that we are going to offer a secure transaction. Right. Adrian Farina, muchas gracias. Gracias a ti. Thank you. Gracias.